Corey. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm Derek Ramsey, and I will be moderating this SakaiCon session. Uh, this presentation is Sakai Assignments and Grader, and will be presented by Dave Eveland, who is the Executive Director of Online Education at Johnson University. If you have any questions during this session, please enter them into the Q&A area. Uh, you can also enter questions uh, into the chat area. Uh, enter, enter questions at any time. Um, Dave, uh, it's up to you. We can address them during the session or at the end. Uh, whatever you would like to do um, uh, we can do either or both it doesn't matter i'll let okay. you sort of i'll let you moderate those um, okay. if they seem like they're appropriate then that's great great okay uh also this session is being recorded will be available at a later date on the youtube channel if anyone has any problems with video or audio during the session please enter that information into the chat box and uh, we'll work with you to get that going so dave go ahead and get started Thanks, Derek, for that uh, really great introduction. <clears throat> I apologize to everybody. Um, I'm, I'm actually coming, uh, I'm getting over a little bit of a cold from last week. So if I sound uh, a little bit hard to hear, I apologize. Um, so I'm really excited today to go over and sort of dive into assignments and grader. Um, this is a great space to be in. Um, in higher education, we talk a lot about uh, assignments and tasks uh, that folks need to do. Um, and that becomes part of what we, we are, we're, we're tasked with doing, um, some of those things. And we use them for lots of different reasons. But before I kind of jump into that, um, I want to take a step back a little bit. Um, and while I was putting this presentation together, it struck me how much putting an assignment together in a course it is not unlike putting together a puzzle. Um, here you can see a, a picture of a puzzle my family uh, sought to put together just this past week, actually. Um, there were four of them and uh, they were varying ages and they were all driven to put this thing together. Um, now, after seeing the puzzle cover, I recall sort of chiding them a little bit meagerly and saying, why put it together if you already know what it looks like? And uh, one of the youngest, uh, she uh, quipped back real fast, uh, almost without missing a beat. She said, because, Daddy, um, uh, we want to see what it really looks like. Uh, she went right back to the task with great focus and loved every moment of it. Um, and so when it comes to putting assignments together, it's kind of like putting a, a puzzle together. Um, uh, uh, I'm not talking about Sakai, the, the assignment tool specifically in uh, Sakai, but we have to figure out where the corner pieces are, um, where the edges are, and, and how to fill in the space. And to think of it another way, though, assignments as tasks done for practice, experience, or proficiency, um, there we have to figure out at least and provide the corners and edges to the task that students are expected to do, right? Um, so the students not only know what to do, uh, but they also know how to do so in a way that reflects learning and success in that task, right? Um, so it was it was very interesting. Uh, does, does, can anybody see where the puzzle is on the on the slide? I know this is a visual thing. Can anybody see where the puzzle is? If you if you can see where it is, just reply back in the in the chat comments. But uh, I tried to hide it, but it's sort of there, and you can see it. But um, so in looking at the assignments tool, specifically inside of Sakai, along with how it works really well with the grader, the assignments tool allows instructors to create, uh, distribute, collect, and grade tasks online. Um, and actually, creating an assignment in Sakai is pretty simple. Uh, in fact, let's see how fast everyone can make an assignment. So um, if you've been in a session earlier today, you know that everybody, uh, every attendee has a sandbox site. So um, we're going to take about 60 seconds to do this. And I want everybody to go to your sandbox site. Um, and uh, in a moment, I'm going to have you go through and create an assignment as quickly as you can. So don't, 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 this, this is mostly a simple exercise in just making an assignment, okay? It's, it's just for fun, it's not for academics, okay? So go and make an assignment entry as fast as you can, okay? On your marks, get set, go. Now I'll give you 60 seconds, okay? And I'll try and see if I can just sort of fill space for 60 seconds, I could count down, or I tried to find that Jeopardy music um, that uh, people love so much. But I'm curious to know how fast can someone actually go and make an assignment? Yes, normally we would go through and pine over making an assignment for like, you know, months and months or something <laughs> in terms of what we need to put in that task by way of lining it up with, you know, uh, the outcomes for the course. Those are all important aspects. But I'm just curious, 
how long does it take someone to just simply go and make an assignment in the assignments tool? When you've gotten it done, come back and just simply post in the comments that you're done. And Derek, can you let me know if anybody's done? I'm kind of keeping a timer here a little bit. Sure. The assignments tool is really, really phenomenal, um, particularly now that it's been paired with a phenomenal grader um, because it provides some really, really great features in terms of faculty being able to, and instructors being able to see that content and comment on those things from students. There's Do we have anybody back? Yep, we got a couple in. Great, okay. That's okay, no, so now that some of some of you are coming back, that's great. I'm so glad you got out to your sandbox course um, and uh, were able to go to and navigate to the assignments tool and then hopefully make an assignment. So some of you, if you're not used to doing this, it might've taken you a little bit longer to try and figure out or even longer than I'm gonna give you time for. But now that you're back, I'm gonna ask a simple question, okay? So what is, and you can respond in the chat area, what's the minimum amount of information needed to add a single assignment entry? And you can respond uh, in audi uh, audibly or if you wanna respond uh, in the chat window, that's fine. Now, to some varying degrees, this, this might be sort of a squishy answer, right? Well, on the one hand, we know that you have to have a title, uh, have to have a title. Um, and we, we sort of think that it has to have some sort of date, right? Right. There's got to be some sort of date, uh, some sort of sets of open, close, and due dates. But the nice thing about that is Sakai actually already fills those in and just assumes what those will be. And so you wouldn't really have to enter those. You might modify them later. But if you're an instructor trying to set up your assignments really quickly, and then you're going to go back and do that, that content, I think the only thing you might need is perhaps just the title. And I think, it, I think Sakai asks you for some instructions, if I remember right. But you can actually skip over the instructions but only if you scroll all the way to the bottom and click um, to do so. And then it might ask you also if you have a point valuation. So the assignments tool um, really does this really great uh, job of providing some space that uh, you know, allows for instructors to initiate assignments, publish those to students, look for student submissions, um, provide some mechanism whereby uh, students can submit those either on time or even late, and then provide some means of a window where instructors can provide feedback or review that content, possibly even with a rubric or with attachments or comments, and then provide that information back to the students. So the students can hopefully close that loop and learn from that whole task of a submission, right? And then of course, there might be the element of using that particular whole process as some means of assessment. And that, that loop could actually be completely um, repeated so that you know, we go through, a, a maybe it's a comp course or something else. And so students are uh, specifically uh, submitting things so that they can have them reviewed only to redo them yet again as part of that review and building process, that learning process. Now this doesn't actually include the potential for using plagiarism detection services or other sorts of things. Um, but I'm gonna sort of get into some of that anyways. So the assignments tool is a really powerful tool, which really allows instructors to do a lot of things. Um, submissions can be peer reviewed, um, which I think is phenomenal. I think it's great whenever we get students to engage with each other and look at their content and say, okay, so how can we work together in, in, in making each other better and improving uh, each other's content? Uh, so that can be peer reviewed and you can create peer review uh, substance for that uh, review stuff. Um, submissions can be from a group. Um, so if you have group uh, work, I know when I was doing post-grad work, um, group work seemed like the thing I hated, uh, but there was a lot that I learned by working with other people in doing group work. Submissions can be reviewed for plagiarism. Grading occurs right where, there within the tool. So this is phenomenal as part of that, that grader function um, that's in the, the Sakai assignments tool. You can grade right inside there. You can uh, provide discrete or uniform collective feedback. Um, so there's a way to go through and say, well, I've got all these students and all of these students did really well or these students need to work on their things. So I'm gonna release their grades and I'm gonna provide this sort of very discrete and specific feedback to them. And the assignments tool can also be linked to rubrics, which is another Sakai tool. Um, it can also leverage LTI tools as a submission type. So this is something that's 
a little bit newer, um, but there are, if you're familiar with LTI tools that are out there, LTI tools can be linked to the assignments. So uh, if you're going through, there's typically several different assignment types uh, that you can select from. And uh, there's also a two, in fact, there's also a two minute video submission type uh, that's actually embedded right inside the assignments tool now. So um, if you're familiar with using, you know, students maybe using YouTube or Vimeo or some other sort of online platform, if you don't want them to worry about putting their stuff out there, um, although maybe maybe your students aren't worried about that, that, that there's a function inside of the assignments tool for assignment type of two minutes um, that students can actually up, upload a two minute video. Um, so maybe you're asking them in a Spanish course to um, recite something in Spanish or to identify things around them that are, um, uh, you know, they've got objects on their desk and they have to identify them in Spanish. And so they have to pronounce those things. And those could be captured in a two minute video or less. Um, uh, so that, that's a really great assignment type. Um, the assignments tool also provides a document viewer for a viewer for grading. Um, so when I'm grading my content, if there's a PDF or a, a Word doc, then I can easily pull that up and I can see the substance of their content. So I don't have to download the, 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 the document just to review everything. And I can uh, include an honor statement. Um, you can submit work on behalf of a student. Um, I don't know how many uh, faculty have gone through before and had a student that was just pleading, you know, like I couldn't get it done. Could you please just accept my assignment? Because I, uh, I, I had to email it to you because I, I didn't have any other way to get it to you. Um, so, you know, there's a way to take that submission and submit it on behalf of the student so that you know it still comes from them and you still have a means of grading it and reviewing it and providing feedback to that student. So um, the assignments tool is just like it's full. It's full of a bunch of different features. It really is. Um, there's a student uh, facing submission status bar. Uh, so when students actually go through and submit an assignment, uh, they have the ability to see where am I in the process of submitting this? Am I ready to submit it now or have I not started it or I've submitted it and I'm waiting for uh, for the uh, feedback from the instructor? Um, you can go to uh, a single page. Uh, this is actually in site info, but you can uh, modify all the dates for your assignments in terms of your open, your close, your accept until dates. And so that makes it really, really easy to set all those things up uh, term after term or course after course. Like I said before, there's lots of different submission types. Um, uh, you can bulk grade and comment on submissions. Um, so that really becomes handy. I know there's a couple of our instructors that actually use that bulk downgrade or download feature where you can download all the submissions for a, a set of uh, students um, and then grade them and then upload those comments and those grades uh, right back into the assignments function. But before I want to, uh, before we sort of, there's, there's tons of rich features inside of the assignments tool. Um, and um, I, I wish we could just sort of play around with the assignments tool a whole lot. But something I want to try and junk, uh, jump to is go to a place where we talk about um, what, what else are is assignments for. Um, and I want you to try and think broadly about this. So there's some ways we can think about assignments to allow students to do things in our courses um, for assessment, for uh, proficiency, for practice, uh, just for experience or for, um, uh, for, for just getting them, their head wrapped around something. And so these are some ideas that I tried to glean uh, from some of the research and some of the things that are out there. Um, so such as having students share a photograph of their own and describe a circumstance surrounding that photograph using the assignments uh, function. That's really great because inside the grader then you can see that photograph and you can see the comment that students would actually make. He would have students submit papers to check for high degrees of plagiarism with instructor notes. So I've said this for a couple of years. Uh, we've had an instructor that actually submits his own notes to an assignment, and then he goes through and looks for students to submit their notes. And he's actually looking for high degrees of plagiarism to his notes because he wants to see if students actually caught on with what he was sharing in class. Um, so it's just a different way of using that, uh, that assignment tool and that plagiarism tool together to actually look for students to see if they're catching on with the content that's being shared in a course or in a lecture. Um, you might try and look at Scott Ginsburg um, uh, uh, tag manifesto, where students wear a name tag for a week. Um, so this is something students would actually go through and they would just wear a name tag everywhere they go, um, which could be very, think about that. I, I can't tell you how many times I've left my office and gone home, got, got stopped at the gas station or somewhere else, and someone looks up and they say my name only for me to remember <laughs> I still have my name tag on, but go through and have students go through and wear a name tag for me and then have them report on their experience. That could be maybe in a psychology course or um, some other sort of um, course where students have to get to know people. 
Um, maybe instead of going for something long, maybe ask students to be very precise. Um, uh, I've had students go through and have them submit assignments where they have to be an exact word count. Exact. Um, we have word counts uh, inside of uh, the, the assignment tool, um, and most word processors do. Um, and so the idea here is to help them look at being clear and concise um, with, what they're, with, with what they're trying to convey. Um, there's a lot of other options uh, for assignment options and types, uh, things that students could do. Um, maybe instead of a paper only submission, maybe have students submit themselves reading their papers in an audio only format. Um, so uh, that could be a, a, an audio attachment to the assignment tool. Um, you can have students go through and uh, use what, what's called the Wiggins assessment method. You can look this up, just go to Google and look for the Wiggins assessment method, which is where the rubrics are used to offer uh, uh, no grade, but there's only a, a, a premise of saying, um, this, is, this is content that I would deem publishable uh, as the instructor. So the instructor looks through a student's content, doesn't provide a grade, uh, but does provide some mechanism of saying, okay, I'm going to provide comment and this is publishable, or no, this is revisable, or this is, this is, this is something that really really needs to be redone with the idea that those things can be resubmitted over and over again so that students are trying to aim at making it to that publishable, uh, publishable uh, that uh, tier. And uh, Wiggins actually provides some mechanisms for how you can eventually provide some grades in a course uh, using that method. Um, they also might diary uh, or uh, provide uh, some mechanism where they, they, they go through and they uh, write a letter as if they are the historical figure and submit that. These are just different ideas for uh, having students write. That doesn't necessarily mean that they always have to write a long lengthy paper. Um, um, so I want to think more broadly and deeply um, about assignments, not just as the tool inside of Sakai, but what we do as educators in higher education. But the Sakai assignments tool and grader provide great feature set for what we can do. Um, and I, I want us to try and think about that. Um, so maybe we provide some student select opportunities within a task. So um, we have a, a, a teacher who's actually getting ready to teach a, a reading poetry course. And one of his final projects in the course is between two different things. One has them actually writing a long lengthy paper. Um, but then the other option is that the students go through and are, uh, are, are supposed to use the skills and the, uh, the application of what they've learned in reading poetry to actually go through and say, okay, I'm gonna write some poetry in the vein of a particular poet. And so those poems that they actually then write, on the one hand, students might think, oh, I'm just gonna write a bunch of poems and because that's far fewer words. But in the case of this assignment, the, the instructor really wants to get at, have you, had, have you developed an appreciation for poetry and reading poetry and understanding uh, those, those, those critical pieces of poetry? And so applying those principles then in writing the poetry will probably be just about as difficult as actually writing a long paper about what they've learned in the course because they have to apply those things. And it gets at both of those, the same set of objectives. So it's just a different way of thinking about how to do an assignment. Um, those would probably be, I assume, uh, maybe submitted in a single document so they could all be reviewed in that document viewer inside the grader. You might try and think about um, using some group work, uh, but make sure you do it strategically. Um, group work can get overwhelming and there's a lot of times students may hate group work, especially if you have people that are um, introverts and don't like working with people. Um, maybe you look to assign less in a course. And that sounds really horrible coming from a, a conference that's supposed to be about uh, higher education using technology and that sort of thing. But maybe you assign less, but look for more substance in, in, in very significant assignments, um, really particularly looking at at, you know, if your students are hitting those outcomes in your in your course um, or for the uh, for the task, and then maybe also ask simply, you know, are you evaluating completion or engagement? Are you are you evaluating simple submission of something, or are you evaluating students' thinking? Right. Um, and then you might also think, you know, what's the task or assignment's cognitive or effect, affective or operational purpose? You know, what's the real reason why you need them to do this? Is it because they've always done a paper, so we're just going to do a paper? Or is there some other substantive reason why a paper fits better than doing some other means of uh, uh, some other sort of assignment they could submit digitally or electronically? So I want to kind of pause here um, and provide some space for comment, um, or if there's been questions, Derek. I don't know if there's any questions in the in the Q and A box. I don't have it up, so I'm not able to see it. Yep, yep. Nothing. Uh, no questions directly on the presentation yet. 
Okay, so I'm kind of curious, what ideas does everyone else have? Um, I would, I'd love to hear what other ideas everybody else has. I don't know if anybody has shared any ideas in the, in the chat window. Okay, I see some comments from earlier, so that's great. Yep, we have uh, one user who doesn't appreciate or doesn't like the uh, Sakai, the uh, date picker assumes a date. Oh, the date. Oh. Yes, yes, yeah, and that can be a that can be a different problem. Yeah, I can see where it can go both ways. Um, yeah, does does anybody have specific assignments that you have taken or you have given to students that you have felt like they were really really novel that they just went over really really well? Um, I can kind of go with some of the assignments that I've done in the past. Um, so uh, some of the, one of the assignments that I did in the past, uh, just to give an idea. Um, so we all look at Excel as a spreadsheet program. And one of the courses I used to teach was an introduction to instructional technology. And so what I tried to do with my students is think more broadly about educational technology. We, a lot of times we'll look at a tool and we'll say, this tool or this technology is meant to do this specific thing and that's it. Well, it's okay to do that because if it does that really well, that's great. But then sometimes it's good to try and think more broadly about what a tool could do or how we could leverage a tool. Now, and don't, don't they take this to an extreme, but I had students go through and create what I, uh, I was teaching students uh, that were becoming um, teachers uh, for K-12 in the United States. Um, and I wanted these teachers to know how to create large scale posters. Okay. And I could have had them buy some software or, you know, figure out some app to do that. But I said, most people have access to some sort of spreadsheet program. And so I was able to share with them in Excel, how you just, you can take content in Excel and spread it out across multiple pages. And then you can go through and create posters that have to do with maybe classroom behavior, or you have to do uh, with the, the rules or um, the kinds of things that are expected in this class. And then they could create those and then print them. And so it was a different sort of assignment. I could have had students, you know, go through and write up a paper or something about how to use Excel, or I could have, which would have not been great, or I could have had them go through and demonstrate some other features inside of Excel, like how to keep grades or how to, how to do formulas. But this particular assignment got at the idea of helping them see what can you see beyond the tool that the tools maybe not necessarily presenting that you can do something that you can do with the tool, but it still lends itself to that particular purpose. Um, uh, so um, I see some uh, comments do, in the we chat. We do have a question. Yeah, we had a question come in. Um, yeah. I like the assignment tool. However, I have three clinical groups who rotate into my clinical every four weeks. So I have cr created three groups. Other than listening to the assignment for each group with three different due dates, is there any other way to put in the assignment? This is in the Q&A session, Dave, if you want to read it. Ooh, uh, that's a really good question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I get those kind of questions um, from time to time um, about how to, how to best organize content so that you can put it in there so it makes it, on, on the one hand, you want the assignment to be really, really concrete and it works really well for your outcomes. That's really, really important. But the other thing that we have to consider when we create assignments inside of a course is we want to make them also fluid and work effectively for someone that's going to be reviewing that content. If it becomes hugely cumbersome to do so, then it doesn't mean that the, the assignment itself is invalid or isn't aligned with the outcomes, but it could mean that it might take you know, in, an, an, an extraordinary amount of time to actually assess that and then get that feedback to students so the students can actually collectively learn from that whole process. And if it's really you know elongated process, then that's not going to work. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to look at the question here, um, just in the Q and A section. Indeed. Right. So you have uh, so right. So you have three clinical groups who rotate into your clinical for every four weeks. Um, right. Uh, that I I I want to say that might be the best way to do it, um, other than listing the assignment for each group with three different due dates. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I think, I think, yeah, I, I don't know of any other way that you could probably do that. Um, if someone else has an offering of how to do that, um, that they uh, feel free to uh, jump in, but I, I'm not sure of another way you could do that. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really hard question. But there's only so much in some cases that we can actually throw into um, some of the constructs that we have going on too. You said students see only their group and due date, but I see three for each assignment and my assignment list is very long. Yeah, 
Um, I, 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 I guess the other thing I would say is maybe try and look at how you name those things. I'm assuming if you've done this multiple times and you all have, you have those students coming in every four weeks, you've tried to come up with some strategic means of, uh, you know, looking at those assignments. Maybe something else you could do, this just is an idea as a way to organize, it would require some work on your part, but go through and perhaps leverage the lessons function to allow you to see specific pages for specific sets of those groups. So maybe you have, if you've got groups coming in every four weeks, then maybe each of those groups has its own page. And so then you can surface those assignments to those particular pages rather than having you to go to the assignments page, which I'm assuming of the tool, which is gonna be inordinately long uh, for all of those different groups. Uh, that might be a way to try and better organize that, um, but uh, that, that's, uh, that's, that's a hard one. That is a really hard one. Um, a question from Marist, how do we add benchmarks with feedback in assignments? <laughs> so Maris, that's a great question. So this isn't necessarily a feature of the assignments tool, like, oh, can I, like, can I create um, you know, some sort of cool benchmarky thing? Um, it's more about how you design the course. So you might create an assignment that is maybe not using um, a, a point valuation, but maybe it's using a check mark, or maybe it's using some of the other uh, assessment, uh, the, uh, the submission types. And so the basic premise then would be to say, okay, students, we're gonna have you work through these things up to a benchmark assignment. And when you get to that benchmark assignment, what, what it means to, to do that benchmark assignment is you've completed all those other things. In a way, it's like prerequisites. But it's the idea to set students aside and say, okay, yes, there are due dates in the course, but we want you to work through these sets of things first as a way to get to that benchmark assignment. Because until they've actually uh, demonstrated an ability to do those set, sets of things that are really required in that, that benchmark assignment, then they're not allowed, they're, in a way, you're not allowing them to go forward until they reach that. Now, that's not going to work in every case. Some, in some cases, you're going to have students that are just, you know, they, they don't care to do that sort of thing. And you're going to have to sort of take care of that through uh, maybe some advising or some, some good natured uh, work with an instructor to help to encourage them to, to see this is the learning path I need you to be on so that we want you to get to that benchmark so that I can have you do that assignment. And then maybe, well, I don't want to do in another assignment. Well, maybe we can design assignments in such a way that they, they attend to. Uh, in, in a way, it also can get at that, uh, that gaming aspect. Um, a lot of times I remember when I watch my own children play games, especially educational stuff, there's benchmark things that they have to do before or they're allowed to do that really prize thing or to you know get that particular thing or whatever it is um, uh, and so maybe you can come up with some strategic really innovative ways to create incentive to get those 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 uh, smaller items done before they're allowed to do that benchmark item which will really demonstrate for them hey this is this is how this is um, I know uh, I've had an instructor before in the past say so you can submit your content to me um, you know however many times you want to well maybe it's not how many how many times but maybe two or three times before it's actually due. But then the, once you actually submit it, then if this is your final submission, then I'm gonna grade that even though I've given you feedback on it um, for this whole time. So it might be a place where you're trying to help students work through that process of learning rather than just simply saying, submit an assignment so I can give you a grade. Um, um, in thinking about one of the things uh, that has to do with assignments, I mentioned this to somebody the other day. I said, I would love it if the assignments tool had some function. Uh, this, there can be a lot of discussion about this, but I would love it if there was a, a, a function inside of assignments so that we could have students sort of conducted through a feedback uh, process where they have to see the feedback from an instructor before they're permitted to see their grade. Um, because in many cases, what I'm concerned about as an instructor is I'm concerned about them seeing the feedback. I want them to learn. I want them to see what I have to share back with them. But in most cases, at least at, least at the undergraduate level, I, I tend to see that students, all they care about is, did I pass or did I fail? And if I passed, how much, how much of a grade was it? Was, it? was it really close to an A? Was it a B? Was it a C? Um, you know, and, and in some cases, you know, that's, that's a horrible process of how we've you know boiled down what we do inside of uh, education we just you know we come up with a grade but really we're, we want to be about that learning we want to be about taking students from where they were at the beginning uh, to somewhere different and and more so than just with a bunch of letters we want to do that with some substance right any other ideas you might have for us the assignments tool um, in general Got a, uh, some few comments in the chat area. Um, you know, student content and lessons, it's unique, uh, works well, it's cool. Um, another 
comment, this is a brilliant idea. I would like for them to have to post a self-reflection before they seek uh, feedback in a grade. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes. Who, did they, who, who said that? Did Amy say uh, that? Amy said that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Maybe you go through and you tell students, I'm with, this, this sounds horrible. Okay, we're not, we're not, we're not supposed to be those people that sort of are uh, the educators that are, you know, high on our podiums and know everything and, and we're just dispensers of knowledge. That's not the idea. But if we can, if we can sort of develop a relationship with our students such that we want to say, look, I want you to do really well, but I want you to review the feedback I've given you. And once that's happened, then I want to go ahead and let you know how well you did because this is, this is what I think, right? But I want, you to be, I want you to be really involved. Even even times when students have done well, they've gotten a B or they've gotten an A, I know there's students that'll actually look at those comments and be like, how did I, how, I did well, but how did I do well? Uh, because that informs, that informs their learning. I see the Maris team said that they can provide feedback without grades and release it to students. Yeah, that's, a, that's one of the features inside of the assignments tool. So you could provide feedback and not grade an item. Uh, so maybe that's a way you could provide mechanisms for that benchmarking where you have you know, sort of tiered assignments that they must do that aren't gonna be graded, but you provide feedback. Uh, but then at some point, then hopefully they've, if once they've completed those things and they've maybe even given feed, they've, they've given a reflection on that feedback, then you can release them to say, okay, so now I'm gonna release you to do this assignment. Uh, and this is the one that's going to be for the grade. I think we've we've met the end of our uh, session time here. Great. Um, yes. Yeah, so thank you, Dave, very much. A uh, great presentation, and thanks everyone for yeah. your questions and comments. Looks like we have about eight or nine minutes to our next session, um, showcase uh, by Wilma. So we'll uh, stop the recording, and we will see everyone in the next session.